What's up guys, YST here and welcome to the free to play series episode 10 and we have got so much to catch you up on including arena progress, missions, the clan boss, the doom tower, you name it and we even took down Bommel 90 which I honestly thought was going to be impossible with the state of my account at the moment without like looking towards solo strategies. So we're going to be breaking all of that down but most importantly how are you guys doing? I hope you've had an amazing week and your fusion's been going well as well. Uh, for our man's the magnificent. For me on my main account, it's been pretty self sailing. I haven't had too much issues so far. I'm just in two minds of when to summon uh, for the Aman's fusion because we've got a 2x void coming up this weekend. And I think I could break the news to you by the time that this video goes out anyway. Uh, let me just let you know what's going on. So this weekend, starting on Friday, March 15th, is going to be a 2x void, but also a 10x chance to get Sulforion, um, who's actually a pretty top tier champion here in the Lizardman. Um, he comes through these AoE burns, he's got revive abilities, you name it, and he just puts out so much damage in the Hydra boss. So, on my main account, I was like, I've really been waiting to get a new legendary champion, but also we've got this Hero's Path, right, starting straight afterwards for St. Patrick's, and it could be the guaranteed champion in Padre the Grand Oak. I'm just thinking, do I save for that or do I go for the 2x voids? Who knows? But we're just going a little bit off topic here. But let me know what kind of events you're going to be pushing for in terms of your fusions. So, okay, the first thing I want to show you is we have pulled another legendary champion. That's right. Last night, literally, I beat Bommel. And then I got an ancient shard from something. I can't recall where it was from. It could have been from the marketplace, to be fair. Actually, no, it wasn't. It was from these progress missions. And then I summoned it and then this popped out. A bloody war chief. So we got our third legendary on this account within the first two months, which is pretty insane odds, right? Considering none of them came from sacred shards. I pulled a Loriaka, which we sacrificed because we can't use Legos. And then we pulled a Hefrak, which I kept just in case that I give away this account. And then we pulled a war chief, which I think I'm going to keep as well, guys. Because if we have a quick look at my champions and go to the reserve vault, he's not the best champion, but in terms of provokes... You know, a two-turn duration, this is one thing that's very powerful for uh, the Hydra boss, right? Locking out the Head of Decay. And up to three turns as well with the Ascended skill. This is just complete lockout on a two-turn cooldown. So I think for someone like this, you know, looking forward, even if I carry on the series, I think it's worth keeping someone of that caliber so I don't have to invest in someone like Jizo to play that role. Um, in terms of my other champions here, you can see that we pulled some top tier ones, which I showed a little bit in my previous shard pulling video. When we pulled a God Seeker Aneri, when we're putting these void shards, this is the champion that we're always screaming for, right? Great for buff extension, revive abilities, resetting those cooldowns, heal values, you name it. She stands as one of the best champions in the game with versatile value, right? And then we also picked up a Sepulchre Sentinel who brings in this block debuffs, increased defense. So it's actually one of my best increased defense champions on my account, as well as a decreased attack A1, and then completely blocking um, incoming damage on a target on a one-turn cooldown. So I've kind of been in two minds of where do we really push this account, and stay tuned because we've got a video coming up with Colred tomorrow, who's a part of my team, and we're going to be speaking about who should you six-star next on your account, as well as some mistakes to look out for. So if you're interested in that, because I know it's one of the biggest topics in raids, that's something we're going to put a dedicated video together um, coming out tomorrow. Fingers crossed anyway. Um, a man eater, of course, I have been investing a ton of books. We have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I think I'm going to stop once we get here. At the same time, he is versatile. He brings in value for the Dark Fade, the Spider's Den, and having a free turn cooldown of a full depletion can actually be very powerful here. Um, and a decreased attack A1 as well, just mitigating that damage coming our way. Of course, we don't have a Painkeeper at the moment. We don't have a Seeker to make like a Man Seeks God composition or, you know, just a second one of this champ. So at the moment, is he going to fit into my clan boss team? No, but... Is he going to be my next six star? It's looking promising. Like even outside of clan boss value, I've been using him in these areas, like I mentioned, and I'm pretty sure he's going to be the reason why I can beat this Doom Tower rotation, guys. So very, very powerful champion. But let me know which route would you go? Would you go the traditional route to try to push your first Ultra Nightmare? Or would you bank on trying to get a Painkeeper or some form of Seeker or something to make a team around Man Eater, right? Who knows? Like this one, I'd have to do a four to three Sepulchre, a four to three Miscreated, as well as finding the book values on both of these champions, by the way, because we need the extension. 
And it's not guaranteed. And neither is this. So, you know, it's a gamble either way. But I feel like he's got blessings on him. He's got books. It's a no-brainer to maybe max him up. Um, outside of that, did we pull anyone else that was pretty good? We got a Woad painted. We got Skimfoss to consider. And also Fenax. And the reason why I mention these champions is, you know, if we look all the way down to the progress, because my aim is to get Arbiter before this series ends, we need to take a Void Champion to 6 of Ascension, a Magic Champion, a Force Champion, you name it. All of the affinities, we need to rank them up again because they're not retroactive. And I really wish that raid would change this because now it's forcing me into building four champions that I may not have wanted to build. So I was actually just looking, who do we really want to rank up here from each of those affinities? So we, I would probably take Skimfoss to avoid. The other way would be rank up Maneater, but just don't ascend him. But you know, I really need that accuracy to place that um, Termite Depletion. So we'll just have to wait and see if we can re-gear him a bit. Um, you know, in terms of Spirit, probably Fenax, Block Revives, Great Arena Champion, and also a Block Buff. So versatile value, right? Especially for Hydra. Uh, Force Champions, probably Sepulchre Sentinel. I don't see anyone at the moment that's really screaming out to me. And then in terms of magic, I don't know. We just have to wait and see on that one, guys. <laughs> Being brutally honest. We've got enough to make another six star, but we're just holding for a champion training or something. So yeah, um, going pretty well so far in terms of champion development. And you can see we've only got six six star champions. And that's for a reason. Because I always say personally that when you're building these champs, I would rather invest like heavily into their builds and make them the best that they can be instead of having just random six stars everywhere and we don't have the gear to optimize all of them. So I like to keep my eye on the target, know what kind of resources that I have in terms of skill tomes, ascensions, potions, you name it, um, to really bring these champions to life. Like As you see, none of them are like missing masteries, right? These are my focuses. Masteries on every single one of them. We've got books on every single one of them. So I know exactly where I'm trying to take this account in terms of development. Uh, but now I feel like I am ready for my next six star, which will probably be the man eater. So, okay, um, Doom Tower. You may have seen in my previous episode for episode nine that I was stuck on the Bomb or the Dreadhorn on floor 90. And of course, there is solo compositions out there, such as the Templar, right? A farmable rare. We could book him up by farming the campaign. And, you know, it could have been an option. And I did prepare for that. Um, you may have seen that one of my food champions was a fully ascended Templar. But then I said to myself, I really don't want to go that route. I want to test myself. And I've been having a lot of fun trying to strategize and take this down. But if I just bring up what happened. So Rathalos would go through and place that Brimstone on the first turn where he enables that double attack. So he drops the Dread Bombs and then he follows by placing the bombs on ourselves according to the buffs that we have, right? And from that moment, he's going to proc two Brimstones at that given moment. And then we're going to do decrease attacks and slowing their speeds down and then getting that unkillable up before the Dread Bombs explode. But the main reason for that is just to keep Godseeker alive and then forcing Stagnite to die as his unkillable will wear off. So then I can reset and bring Stagnite back so he's alive again. So we can keep placing those decrease attacks and slowing that boss down. Whilst also using Mani to, to deplete the term meter. And although that drops a Dread Bomb, it gave my Raphalos a bit more time to get some more damage out. So let me try and replicate it here. It's really hard to do, but we need to time that fifth attack from Raphalos as well. So we go boom. Um, we're going to save our decrease attack. There we go. It took me so long, guys. Two weeks of strategizing and putting a team together and trying to visualize this stuff. It was pretty bonkers, but I was hyped. I was in my room like, yes, yes. And then my wife and kids were about to go to bed. They're like, what happened? What happened? They must have thought I won the lottery. I was like, I beat Bommel. <laughs> I don't think anyone was impressed. <laughs> I was like, I've been trying this for so long, please. All right, let's slow this dude down. And then we're going to go boom. Is this number three attack? I think so. So now we're just going to take them out. There we go. And I'm just going to take them around here and lead into the boss. At this moment here, I'll just place a decrease defense. There's the smite. We might actually be able to beat it again. So this is what we've been banking on. And my, I was re-rolling it until this occurred. A1. There we go. A1. Saving that man eater unkillable. Like I said, if you had 260 champions here, you do not need the man eater. It's just to keep Godseeker alive. And now we're going to go boom. Big smack. 170,000. We didn't have decreased defense on, unfortunately, as it wore off. And then boom, A1, no decrease speed, which is not really good. And then here, at this moment, so we just don't get stunned, we will place this now. And we know that he's not going to strip our buffs, right? And hopefully this can help some of you guys out as well, of maybe trying to take down your first rotation of Bomb with a Dreadhorn. 
There's our decreased speed. And you can see we still got one more turn of unkillable here. And the dread bombs will explode before that happens. I believe Stagnite might die, which is what we want to happen in this occasion. We got decreased attack, so maybe it won't occur. Um, he's got. Oh, we could place it on again, I guess. Keep that active. Get some big damage out. Make sure that he's not going to die from the dread bomb smacks. And then now we could bring back Doom Priest. So what I would do usually is bring back the Stagnite, right? And then I would drop the turn meter at this moment here. And this is allowing us to come through and deal as much damage as possible before the other dread bombs proc, right? So we're hoping for another Brimstone before that double hit. It's about to occur, right? Brimstone? No. Big smack. Come on. 103,000. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. He's about to strip our buffs, so we're not going to place any buffs on ourselves. Boom. We took some bombs. And look at this. We are just doing, having no problems here, right? There's the smite. Is it just before a double turn? It could be. There we go. Smite again. Double smite. And this will be a victory now. This will be a victory. So can you see how you can utilize Brimstone to your advantage and really take this boss down, right? We could still lose. We probably will still lose. Damn. But we got so close there. We got so close. So I just had to keep re-rolling the dice until we managed to get it done. And that was the strategy that I used to take down Bomb with the Dreadhorn. Um, in terms of the Scarab King, I was actually really scared I wouldn't be able to get this done. And I threw, um, what's his name, Miscreated Monster into the mix. But the issue with him is he places a continuous heal on himself. So there's always that 3% chance for the Scarab to steal that and heal all the way back up to full over the duration of the run. So I was like, how can I really speed this up? Because my run went up for one hour and I was still like turn count 1,200. I was like, I'm taking this off. We need to rethink about this one. So what I did was actually put him in a toxic set and the toxic set allowed him to deal that poison damage and because the boss is spirit, we was getting a lot of weak hits. Took about 20 minutes and, you know, he self heals and stuff and pretty cool strategy to take down Scarab King on floor 100. And that leaves us now in a position to finish off this rotation as we got one week left. And I feel very confident that we can take down not only the first rotation that we did by day 30, but also the second rotation before this series comes to an end. So which I think is pretty cool. Both rotations back to back and we might even be able to squeeze in the final rotation as well if we have the time. Because we got... How long? If we are on day number... Oops, if we just go daily logins. So we're day 63. Let's just say a week, right? It's day 69. Let's say day 70. And then we need to do 12 floors. That would take us to 82. We'd have to be on point. I think we could complete the first rotation as well with the Frost Spider. But I'm going to have to invest into some burns. But I feel like if we can do that, that is a massive achievement, right? Be able to beat all three rotations within a three-month series. It's phenomenal. And you have to consider all the champion training in that time, the gear development. And, you know, it was probably about a month before I even stepped into the Doom Tower in the first place. So Griffin's going to be pretty self-explanatory this time, thankfully, because our Rathalos Blade Master is the right affinity, as well as my Royal Guard and my Doom Priest. So that's going to be pretty easy, I would like to think so. Is that a 5-star chicken for a reward or a 4-star? If that's 5-star, that's pretty massive. And then we're going to go to Dark Fae. And the team for that is, hopefully, just the Miscreating Monster will be enough with the Depletions, and also a Royal Guard to decrease speed and also turn meter reduction with max HPs. If that's not enough, we may have to bring in Skimfoss. But I believe within a week, we should be able to have no problems taking this down. As long as we've got the accuracy requirements on our champions. So yeah, that was it in terms of Clan Boss and Doom Tower. I did want to summon this as well. And the reason why I summoned yesterday was there was a Vogoth in there. I was like, oh, I want a Vogoth. But I don't think I want any of these ones at the moment. Let's see what we get. Come on, bring it home. I've just been summoning. Every single time I get a shard, I summon it. That's just been my mentality throughout this series. So, okay, what's next? What are we really looking towards on this free-to-play? Well, CVC, we're doing pretty well. We're going to get some rewards here, and we've got 80,000 points because we got our new legendary, granting us 30,000. And then in terms of missions, we need to do Spirit Keep tomorrow, go through these, right? And these are all pretty self-explanatory. We're going to get a lot of shards, a lot of gems, which opens the opportunity for more uh, masteries on our champs, right? And that's really what I'm going to be focusing on, especially with Manita, right? And then we really want to start getting these Void Shards. But the problem is we got these Affinity Bonuses to level 8. 
Now, the level seven one took me so damn long because I had to climb all the way up to gold five, which we're comfy in at the moment. But we need to make sure that we're on top of the board here because this is just going to slow us down if we don't stay on top of it. But if we could start unlocking some void shards, hundreds of gems everywhere, the only thing after arena that's going to stop me is ranking up those champions with the ascension. So as long as I don't ascend champs and maybe rank up the right affinities, we should be good to go, guys. So in terms of arena, we are now on gold five, as you see. Um, we've just been focusing on one-man defenses. And i got to be honest, I did use a lot of refreshes just like so and finding these pages um, when I was trying to push to that stage seven anyway, because it was just like, I've had enough now. Boom. And this has given us four gold bars, whereas before I was getting two gold bars. And that was just a nuisance. So being able to speed up our process and really get these rewards is going to be very beneficial, right? I'm not falling for this one again. I fought for that yesterday. I was like, damn. <laughs> so, okay, last but not least, what I really want to do is bring up the website and speak about not just our progression, but your guys' progression. So here we can have a quick look at the leaderboards and where my team's sitting at the moment. So Team YST at the top right now, but we can't get complacent here. We need to keep grinding and trying to get these points where we can to make sure that we can take home the victory. And we're very close with Team Drock and Team Deadwood as well, who I also have a collab coming out with sometime this week. So it's going to be a week full of collabs for anyone that enjoys those. And I, he's been highly requested on the channel because of all of the stuff that happened in the last free-to-play series. So it should be a pretty eventful one. Be fun to have him on. Uh, Team Drock as well, doing really good. And ourselves, we've been pushing through our points as well. And do doing pretty good, of course. So, in terms of the normal leaderboards, um, you know, we got 47 Great Hall Developments, Bullet Reaver, and everyone else popping out a lot of six-star champions, which I could probably do. But I've just been focusing on what I've got at the moment and then moving step by step and making the right decisions for my account. A Faction Wars, I've not really done anything. So when we think about this, there's a lot of progress to be made. Because I haven't even got 100 stars. So if I could start unlocking some faction wars, that could be a good boost uh, towards the final of this um, event for some last pushes of points. That's definitely something I need to start considering and building champions for all of these factions to just push the limits, right? Um, Classic Arena, we hit gold five, of course, sitting bang in the middle. Sixth person to do it out of the creators, I guess, maybe, if that's how it works. Um, current fastest champion, we're nowhere near that, but we need to maybe take gold grab to a rank five and... Who knows? Um, Doom Tower, of course, we did the first rotation, stage 120. And then we're currently going to be potentially the third or second person for rotation three, which we're on at the moment, which will be a pretty cool achievement for myself. As I think that Doom Tower is one of those focuses outside of Clan Boss that everybody should be striving to do because it doesn't take resources. It only takes keys and it's free rewards, right? You get so much along the way. A Clan Boss, we done pretty decent. I think my main key was 14.74. I think that's bang on what I actually got. So we're sitting just below everyone else, but I would love to get to Ultra Nightmare. I think with Ultra Nightmare, I guarantee you it's all Venom Ages, right? Or Geomancers. So Venom Age, Skull Crusher, of course. And then we've got Geomancer. And these champions really enable it um, faster than some other champions in the game, of course. Um, Hydra, Cold Red popping out here. Let's go with the Archer. That's very cool to see. Some nice points. Um, Dragon, nice. Ice Golem. 22. I managed to hit 21, but that was just good RNG. Bye, nice spiders. Uh, we're stage 19. I did that yesterday. I'm just trying to put together a team for stage 20. I maybe need to take my ultimate Gallic to a higher stage or just having my money to at rank 6 with better cooldowns. Because that unkillable is really keeping us alive, right? But let's have a quick look at what you guys have done in the community. So let's do this. And 79 Great Hall Development. Damn, that's actually pretty insane, right? 15 rank 6s. Someone's been doing some champion training. Uh, Platinum Arenas. 543 stars in Faction Wars. JS Foot is pushing towards that lid of the Death Siren. Congrats. That's a massive to get that far. Uh, tag Team. Current versus Champion. 300 with an Arbiter. Very impressive. Rotation 1, Doom Tower. Um, no, well, Rotation 2, 9 people managed to get it done. Rotation 3, it was... We might not even make it into the first 10 on this one. It's potential to it. If we just speed up and beat down the Griffin and the final boss, but that's still very good. Congrats to everyone that's managed to do that so far. Not an easy task to do. Uh, Clan boss, we have got 26 million damage on Ultra Nightmare. Very impressive. Geomancers again. Let's go with Jareg. Top tier champion. 
Um, Hydra, we've got a 25 million key coming out from Panda. Pretty interesting team, to be fair. Arbiter's going to be a big push. But the Claude Beast Feeder, increased speed and stuff. Very nice. Um, and yeah, just general progression. Stage 24 Spider. Wow. Okay, so this is like the strategy that I've been looking for, guys. So it's all around block debuffs, which I'll be bringing in with Maneater, as well as someone like a Skim Foss, but I'm going to use Maneater um, to deplete that term eater. So we've got some time to just kill the boss, right? Whereas he's got a Geomancer, but I'll be using a, um, what's his name? Royal Guard to enemy max HP on a Relentless proc and just keeping that term eater down. So that's going to be my strategy looking forward. And yeah, you guys have been absolutely crushing it. Absolutely crushing it. Congrats to all of you guys uh, pushing in that work. And good luck to everyone that's trying to push the top of these leaderboards before this series ends. So was there anything else that I really wanted to speak about? Great Hall development. We're focusing into defense. I don't know why. Um, I just felt like it's going to value my miscreated monster, who my whole account is revolved around. Um, Live Arena, we pushed into Bronze 2. I've been having some fun with that. Um, Clan Boss, Nightmare at the moment. Doom Tower, Curse City. Um, we've been pushing a few floors, but we just got stuck on this one. Um, I got pretty far, but we just never got good RNG with Frozen Banshee. So maybe with some high resistance, she might be able to get it done. And yeah, just slowly but surely going through everywhere and trying to progress our account where we can. So on that note, that is going to be all for today's episode. If you guys did enjoy it, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It's going to be a crazy road towards the end of this series, as you see. We've not got long left. We have not got long left and I can't even click the button. So we're going to have Corridon tomorrow. We're going to have Deadwood on the next day. And I'm pretty sure there will be a lot of episodes before this series comes to an end. I'll see you on a video soon and peace.